Across Asia, governments have heavily invested in technology to help control the spread of the coronavirus, which spread in this region before the rest of the world. Here in Hong Kong, those returning from overseas are tested at the airport and must self-isolate for 14 days, as well as wear tracker wristbands to monitor their quarantines. I caught up with Derek Quick right outside his home on his last day of quarantine after returning from Los Angeles. Derek, you had to wear that device the entire time, even in the yes. shower? Yeah, even in the shower, washing dishes, uh, giving my kids a bath. And how does it work? You have to pair the app to uh, to the electronic raceway. Once you arrive home, then uh, you have to walk around the perimeter of your uh, uh, dwelling so that it will create a geofence uh, around, around your home. So then uh, your phone basically confines you to where you are. And then this uh, electronic bracelet uh, is connected to uh, your phone by Bluetooth connection, uh, thereby creating the leash. And the minute the disconnection is broken, then the authorities are alerted. South Korea is going well beyond that. For example, if I test positive for COVID-19 in its capital Seoul, the government would use cell phone information, patient statements, surveillance camera footage, and even credit card transactions to trace where I've been and who I may have seen. Paula Hancock's reports. South Korea says it can access that information in as little as 10 minutes. We put in the mobile phone number, the credit card number, set the time period, and all the information we need appears in our system. Your location from at least two days before you noticed you had symptoms, how long you spent in each place, how busy the area might have been. Mobile emergency alerts are then sent out to the public, sometimes six or seven a day, telling you about cases in your area. It wasn't always this fast. The KCDC says it took up to 48 hours to get the same information five years ago during the MERS outbreak. Criticism of a slow response at the time led to the law being changed. One recent example in my neighbourhood shows just how much detail is being shared with the public by both the government and local businesses. For example, I know the exact locations this individual went to. I know the door that they used in order to get inside my local supermarket. I even know that they bought dry chilli peppers at the self-checkout. Across China, the movements of hundreds of millions of people are tracked by a color-based health code system. David Culver has more. We noticed the start of this effort back in mid-February, arriving in Shanghai from Beijing. Each arriving passenger required to write down health and travel history and register for your personal QR or barcode. Have you been traveling away from China for the past 40 days? No. A few weeks later, and Shanghai had rolled out its QR codes citywide. Walking into a restaurant, hotel, shopping mall, you're expected to show it. Here in Shanghai, shop owners and hotel managers have told us a green means you're clear to go in. Yellow or red suggest you've been in an area with high exposure to the virus, and it could mean quarantine. And that's using some of the geolocation tracking on the cell phone, and they can specify if you're on a train, for example, and you're on one end of a carriage or you're in a separate car from a confirmed case. That's incredible that they can, I mean, that's a level of surveillance which obviously it does not ex it does not exist here and and probably i think could right. not exist i think david probably would agree with that what may work for some governments around asia probably won't work around the world especially given concerns over data privacy and using data to regulate people's lives i spoke with cybersecurity expert susan landau i think it's a very dangerous technology in the wrong hands and while I worry less about my government using it in the next five to 10 years against me and against other people, I worry about it becoming the norm and us losing privacy in a very serious way. You have said contact tracing is no silver bullet. What do you mean by that? The problem with Bluetooth is that signals go through walls, but in fact, they're in separate apartments and one, neither of them are getting exposed from the other. But Bluetooth won't show that. It'll be a false positive. There's also false negatives. We don't know how much asymptomatic spread happens. Should we even consider handing over our personal data, giving over and compromising our privacy to make these things work? Here's where Google and Apple and some of the researchers have set up the system in a way that is protective of people's privacy. The apps that, that use the system will not be allowed to collect location data. They will only be able to do contact tracing. Your phone will send out an identifier 
every few seconds, every few minutes, it varies with the app, my phone will do the same. What will happen is if I at some later point find myself positive for COVID, your phone will be checking with the central database. It then alerts you, but you're the only one that's alerted.